MDM for you 3.1 scatter plots and linear correlation. Classifying variables in causal relationships. Causal relationships are when two values are connected. When one value changes, it affects the other. The dependent variable or response variable is affected by another variable, the independent variable, explanatory variable. Example, identify the dependent and independent variable for this situation. So the sentence y depends on x will help you identify the dependent y and independent variable x. So years of experience and hourly wage. If you were to say this as hourly wage depends on years of experience, this makes a lot more sense than years of experience depends on hourly wage. One variable is said to be causing the other. So the dependent variable is hourly wage and the independent variable is years of experience. So when we are classifying these types of relationships, there are three types, positive, negative, and no correlation. So as X increases, what is happening to Y? If Y is increasing, then we have a positive correlation. As X increases, if Y is decreasing, this is said to be a negative correlation. And if there is no correlation between the variables, we say there is no correlation here. All right, so we've seen visually that we can discuss the relationship between these two variables. However, we need to be able to quantify the strength of this relationship. And Carl Pearson gave the definition for the correlation coefficient. This coefficient gives the quanti uh, quantitative measure of the strength of a linear correlation. The correlation coefficient indicates how closely the data points cluster around its line of best fit. So it's given as this definition, r is equal to the covariance, so the standard deviation of x with respect to y, divided by the product of the standard deviation of x with respect to x and y with respect to y. You can see a more rigorous definition of this on page 161 in the textbook, and it will also show the algebraic manipulation, which will bring you to this final step here. And believe it or not, this is the most simplified version of how you can calculate the correlation coefficient if you have a set of data. But let's discuss what this value means when you get your result. So if there is no correlation, we have a value of zero. If all the points were on a positive line, then we would have a perfect correlation, one. And if all of the data values on a scatter plot were on the line that is negative, we'd have negative one. So our values are between negative one and one, and our strength is split into thirds, described as weak, moderate, and strong, whether it's positive or negative. So let's take a look at an example. Determine the correlation coefficient for the following data. If we're given two variables, x and y, and um, a sample with ordered pairs, then we can do the following calculation. So you will always be provided with this formula. So that being said, you will be given data and be asked to describe the correlation between the two variables. So what we need to do is develop all of the different inputs for this formula. Look at what is given. So we will need the sum of x times y. So this will be one of our columns. The sum of x, the sum of y, and n represents our number of data points. So there's x, y is considered one as an ordered pair. One, two, three, four, five, six. The sum of x squared. So notice that this column here, x squared, is different than just squaring this value. So be very careful to the position of brackets 
for each of these, especially in this context here. The sum of x squared, that is 48 squared, whereas the sum of x squared values is 418. Those will be different values. So we substitute into our formula with all of our given information, and we evaluate. It will give us some number. And remember our index for talking about the strength of a correlation coefficient. This is 0 0.4668. That is a moderate positive correlation. 